really say block this corner is like it can be plants and that's why. Yeah. Okay. And I think I remember doing that after yes. something happened yeah, with me too. I someone think that's, yeah. Yeah. Packing situation, yeah. Quite a while ago too. There's, there's something about the, the weightiness of His glory that you can't, can't replace with anything else. Uh, we, were, we were created for, to experience the weight of His glory, uh, and there's just something so profound about it, and thank you all for... Does my hair look okay? It does. It looks wonderful. A <laughs> little, little long after the time of the year, but you you know, you're yeah, touching right, years, you're right. not military. You should have said, well, it's gray, but that... You know. <laughs> Anyway. Is, is that like a technique to relieve nervousness? Or? I don't know. He just looked at me and he goes, how's my hair look? It looks great. Uh, trying to distract her. Yeah, it's because I had to. Thank you. Just bring it in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your hair looks That's fine. <laughs> We've had a... Because I would have cried. I had a song and I didn't want to cry. <laughs> We had the last couple of weeks. We've had just a little bit of an issue. I'm hoping that I've corrected that with the with the volume level. Is, um, can anybody just check that and see? Uh, usually, the volume has been really high until the last two weeks, and then it's tr- kind of dropped down. So I think I may have been hooking something else. So if I could get a little feedback on that, I see Lana. Good morning, Lana and Kim and Mary and Todd, and it's good to see everybody. I've never noticed it, and I watch, I watch the services I again on YouTube, and I haven't yeah. had any issues. Well, the last two, though, if you'll go back, and it, it, okay. the, the volume, is, it sounded like it's almost coming from here, that I'm getting it here, from here instead of through here. So it should be, okay. it, it should be really, does it sound, does it, <laughs> Deborah, does, <laughs> does, it sound, does it sound like it's back up to that level again, or, or is it? Yeah, he's listening yeah. to you right now. Okay, all right. Well, it sounded kind of low, so that's why. You had the okay. That's why. Well, maybe I should turn my volume up. Yeah. Are you uh, feeling it's kind of low? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that ho- hopefully, what we'll, you know that we've got that corrected and volume is great. Good. Uh, good to see you, Crystal. And I don't see. See, I'm seeing other. If you don't, if you don't write something, I can't. Sometimes the little pictures are hard to, to hard to see, but. We're, thank, we're thankful for each one of you that's, that's watching us th- this morning because um, we just had a long, we had a long uh, wor- uh, time of praise and worship this morning and uh, just felt uh, just, the, just the weight of, of His glory, which I believe uh, He's preparing this, this house for that, the weightiness. And, and, and we're, as we're going to see at the end of the message today, there's something about uh, the message, the gospel of grace that creates an atmosphere in which the glory of God can rest freely in our, our presence because it has, we know that it has nothing to do with us yes. and that it has everything to do with Jesus. Amen. And so there's, there's a, it's almost like preparing the furniture you know, to, to hold the weight because there's nothing, there's nothing more weighty than that. that and and uh, I remember when we were in Birmingham a couple of years ago, there was a, we, we had an experience where the, the, it, was, it wasn't, there's a difference between the anointing, we talked about this before, between the anointing and the, the glory, the weight of His glory. The anointing is, is a lot of the things He does, and I just, I just love when He shows His hand and does mighty things in our midst, but, there, but then when you, when you get into the, the weight of His glory, there's something that is, is so eternal, uh, eternally present about that place that you get caught in it, and there, that's when you experience in, in a way in your spirit that, that's almost indescribable about His goodness because that's what His glory is, is more about His goodness. Remember, you know, I, th- I thought about this sometimes. Moses, he saw, look, look what he saw, and, and this was all by the anointing. He saw what, what happened to Egypt, the Egyptians and their deliverance. Can you imagine watching a big ocean divide? Uh, and then close in on your enemies, and a water start coming out of a rock in the middle of the desert. All the things that they, the, the, mir- the miraculous things that they that he saw and the children of Israel saw. But even after that, 
He said, you know, this is all well and good, but Lord, I want to show me your glory. Show me your glory. And he said, you know, what did he say to him? I'm going to, I'm going to pass by you. I'm going to, I'm going to, you, you can't see my face and live because you're in, you're not, you're not, you don't have a newborn, you're not born again. But I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock, which speaks of Christ. And he said, I'm going to pass by and I'm going to show you my goodness. I'm going to let, I'm going to let all my goodness pass before you. And see, that's the weightiness of that glory that we were, I was experiencing it this morning. So thank you all for, for, uh, and Deborah and different ones for speaking out about flow and going ahead and flowing in that because there's something about that that invigorates us in a way spiritually that nothing else can. And I'm so great. I'm so grateful for that. Good morning, Lisa. And, and I don't know if, if, uh, I think, I think I see Melissa up there. I think that's her picture. But anyway, uh, God bless you all, and thank you for being with us this morning. The, the message title this morning is called, uh, is Our Better Covenant. Our Better Covenant. Uh, and that's really, a, you know, there's so many other ways we could describe it, but that's the way um, the chapter 8 in Hebrew starts, the title of that. If you see it in the King, New King James Version, it says, A Better Covenant. But I like the Passion Translation when it says our better covenant because it belongs to us. It's ours. Uh, it's our covenant. Uh, and I like the way that they use the word our because it also describes that it's, it's the, the, the triune, the Trinity, saying it's our um, report. It's our truth, uh, and it's given to you. And so uh, I'm just so thankful this morning. Uh, and, I, and I think that... that the Lord has really been, I mean, this week I've just been uh, praying a whole lot about where we are, where we are in, this, in this body, this house, which is His house. We are His house. We are uh, temples of the Holy Spirit. When we come together, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, is with us and in us individually and corporately. And there's nothing that's impossible or nothing that we, we can't anticipate in a good way as a result of that. And uh, any, you know, I, I wrote this note down this morning when Deborah and I were when we were having a little breakfast. Uh, uh, anything that I do for the purpose of how it makes me look is 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 the is the trap, is the issue, um, and uh, humility is the is is the motivation for how it makes Jesus look. So the more it's like David when when he he said, "Is there not a cause?" Humility, you know, his his brothers accused him of being haughty and prideful, but they and the, they were the ones that were prideful, because he said, "Is there not a cause?" Uh, he he recognized by by a, a sense of humility, um, what what God was calling him to do that had nothing to do with him, uh, and I think that's what I think that's the the key for all of us, and I sense that in all of us that we're they're move, we're moving into that place where we're not it's no, we're not concerned about how it makes us look or everything is about how it makes him look uh, and that's where we want to go with this and I believe that that we're we're in that in that uh, path uh, here and I'm just so thankful for that uh, Hebrews chapter 8 we're going to we're going to start out here the new king james says about this now this is the main point the things that we're saying and the, and the, I think it's the passion says what does it say don it says the the uh, crowning the crowning point of what he's trying to say. So that's a key thing here because he's saying, now all that I've said so far, this is the main point of what we're saying. <laughs> uh, and, then that, and that is that we, are, that we have a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. And also, as, we've, as we've pointed out several weeks now, we are a, a kingdom of priests also seated with him in heavenly places at, in Christ right now. So we're the ministers of this new covenant, the ministers of reconciliation. But we have this high priest that's uh, seated at the right hand of the throne. Um, a minister of the sanctuary, which really means holies. It says, uh, if you look at the reference there, a minister of the holies and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. So the, everything that was done on the earthly, in the earthly one, it was all a copy, a, a shadow of what was, was constructed by God himself uh, for, our, for, our media, to, for our mediator to, to, to uh, um, be, become our representative in heaven. Amen? 
Now, um, in, in the first section of your notes there, Hebrews 8, chapter 8, verse 6 says, But now he, which is Jesus, has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is also a mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Now, what was in what uh, the question in that first section is: In what ways is Jesus's ministry more excellent? It has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with us, and everything the, to do with him. Everything to do with him. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, y'all see y'all are already y'all are already echoing back what I said just a minute ago. That's see that's humility, that's true humility. Um, and um, as, as you're going to see when we when we finish today, that's that's what y'all both said is very prophetic of, of where we're going with today. Derek, he did what we can't do. He did what we couldn't do. Absolutely, he he did what we couldn't do. Um, <clears throat> because here's a, here's one of the reasons why is because he can actually bring people to God. Mm-hmm. The old covenant couldn't. So as he's ministering as our high priest, he's actually bringing us in reality to the Father where that couldn't happen under the old. There was one person one time a year that could go in, not without blood, first for himself and then for the, for the people. And, and they, they call that before they get it all set up in the wilderness. In, in Moses' day, they called that the, t- the, the tent of meeting. And that's where, remember, there's a few people that wanted to hang out there all the time. One of them was Moses, of course, and he would speak face to face uh, because above the mercy seat, which is uh, the one in heaven, is where we approach now, the throne of grace. But when they approached that, that's where God actually spoke to them uh, from that mercy seat. And Joshua hung out there a lot, and also Caleb. They all love that, and that's what I feel like we're moving into, is, is we're, we're moving into this place of, of recognizing um, and seeking after that, that place of... Uh, where, where, where relationship is continuing, continuing to be developed in an unhindered way because there's nothing between us and Him. And that's what the mediation of Christ is all about. There's no more distance between us and the Father. In fact, that was the name in which He came to... That's what He came to reveal was the Father when He, came, when he was on the earth, to reveal our Father as our Father, as fa- as, as, instead of God. Uh, in, 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 a, in a way that you'll see here in just a minute. Uh, so he actually, he actually accomplished what the other system couldn't accomplish. Um, and then, um, now it, it also, it, it, um, the covenant is better because it really works. The other one didn't work. There was fault. It was fault. It had faults in it because it was again dependent upon, depending on up, dependent upon us. Um, and then uh, this covenant is based upon promises that offer us something better than um, just ritual cleansing. The promise is that we can be by one offering one sacrifice he has perfected us forever that's what we talked about last night so the ministry and there's there's so many others there's so many other things i, I could i mean i put a list down but you could go on the, what what is one of the main things that the main differences we've asked this question before the main difference between the old and the new cup covenant is what the main most important difference jesus is well that no but i mean what is the what is the most important difference to to us between the old covenant and the new covenant. Well, it's better, yeah. Good, good, good answer. The old covenant we had to do and the new covenant he did. Yes. Now, how do we do it today? By acknowledging that... It is he that works in us both to will and to do his good pleasure. So what's the main... Who's the he that's in us now? Jesus. We're Christ in us, but it's, it's his Holy Spirit so the new covenant is inward. And, and see, the Holy Spirit is the difference between the old and new. The, on the old covenant, it was, it was, we looked at some rules and we tried our best to look at those. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. That's what they said at Sinai. And God says, keep them away from me. Because the fact that they even said that is not what he was interested in. 
He didn't want them to say, we can do this. He wanted them to say, we need grace. We can't do this. <laughs> that was the point. And that's what Mount Sinai was for. And it is today the same thing. But why we wanted to pick up a camp, a camp again around Mount Sinai and take up that, that burden of doing ourselves what only the Holy Spirit can do anyway. So the, the main distinction between Old Covenant and New Covenant is that we have the abiding Holy Spirit in us that gives us the power to do it. Um, and that's a, that's, a, that's a very important difference. So it's self-powered versus His power. Uh, the, old, the old system was self-powered. Um, <clears throat> And there's, there, there's a bunch more. I know we're kind of running a little bit shorter on time this morning. So, But you, you know, that's, that's the one I really wanted to get clear this morning is the, is the distinction between what was on the outside through the five senses, like we talked about last week, and now what's on the inside through a new law. The, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. And that concludes the law of love, the law of liberty, and the law of faith. Now, the law of love says that we love because He first loved us. Amen. Under the old, the old system, it says you must love the Lord God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Can I say something? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Because that Rob Rufus teaching was teaching about that, and he said when you come um, and you recognize that it is no longer all of your heart, strength, and soul. It is all of his, his to you. <laughs> yes, all of his mind, all of his soul, all of his strength. His that's, how, that's how he loves you. Yeah, it has nothing to do with your power. And that, only because of the Holy Spirit in us, Amen. can cause that level, the reality of that, to be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is what causes us to rise above the, the, the old system that wants to condemn. There is now therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ who walk after the Spirit and not the flesh. And that doesn't mean that you're, you can't, if you've got the Spirit of God in you, you can't help walking by the Spirit because you've got the Spirit. But you've got to lean on that understanding. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to sow to the Spirit and not to the flesh. You can't go back to the system of, of trying to do what Jesus has already done. Amen? Uh, that's, you know, the old system was, you know, you must or if you do it, then the promise is yours. But the problem is you've got to do them all, all the time, from birth to death, without one mistake. Not a good system. Like rut row. Like rut like, row, like Astro and the Jetsons, you know, rut row. Um, but now, in the new covenant, it's all about what God says, and He says, I will. I will. The old system is you must. But now he's, he's the one that's taken on, as the mediator, he's, taking, he's taken our position in the covenant relation. Now remember, a contract is about stuff. A covenant is about people. So we have a covenant with God uh, between us and Him, but the one that we inherit the covenant relationship of is Christ Himself. He's the, he's the one that's mediating and standing in our position to give us everything He deserved, and nothing he didn't deserve, doesn't deserve, right? Okay, so this it's it's a it's an awesome. This is such a I mean a better talk about a better covenant. I mean that's talk about the the most understatement uh, of, of the century. That's that's <clears throat> in verse uh, chapter eight, verse seven and eight. It says, "For if that first covenant had been faultless, then there'd been no place would have sought for a second. If it had worked, it would have worked." And we'd be sitting here, you know, working, <laughs> working it out. But because it didn't work, uh, because finding fault, now look at, notice the word in your notes there, finding fault with them. So you found fault with them because, because of their inheriting Adam's uh, uh, sin, the sin, the, the death, spiritual death that he inherited from the first Adam, he was not in a position to be able to do it. Because he was, in, in, you know, he was dead in his trespasses and because of one man's disobedience. But thank God for one man's obedience. Then now we have the capacity to have him, Christ, in us, which is the hope of that glory. And that glory is his goodness. It's his, the weightiness of, of, that we can contain that and display that and have it, have it 
cause a change in our lives personally within ourselves and with the people that we come in contact with where they sense a weightiness of His glory when we're around. I mean, it happened with the apostles. It happened with Paul. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, they're, 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 we're, we're moving into something that is just going to be so awesome. I just, I, and, and it all comes because of revelation. It becomes because of the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what faith is. And our faith is being, was authored by Christ and it's going to be finished by Him. And we're in that grace walk, that walk of His faith that's, that's causing us to, to grow each day. Amen? In the truth. Now that we're hearing the sound of the truth of the covenant, the right covenant. And that's why you have to be careful when your ear, what, you know, with your ears, what you hear. Remember that little song uh, for, that used to be for children, but I mean, it's, 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 the adults need to be listening to that song too. Uh, so how was the new covenant improved? How was it improved? I mean, it's really, it's really the same it's the same. Uh, Isn't it the Holy Spirit? Yes, the Holy Spirit. Because uh, <laughs> I thought I already wrote that answer down. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it, the Holy Spirit is the key to all of it, but the improvement part is, I mean, the improve, what I was kind of thinking in my head, which sometimes that's, not, that's, scary, that's scary, but uh, is the, under the old, the old system, it was you had to achieve it. You had to achieve, you know, there's, there's success in life that you see operating in the world system. And I, and I, used to wonder, I used to wonder why Jesus would say, unless you hate your life in this world, you can't be. But if, once, you, once you understand grace, once you understand this new covenant, you hate the life that, that, that is connected to this world. You hate it. And you hate people that you see having to continue to walk in it. You hate it. Mm -hmm. Because they don't know that there's a, there's a deliverance from that system. Yeah. Uh, and that's what he meant. He didn't mean like, if you know, I, I just hate my life, you know. Yeah, it's not what he's talking about. He, he said the life in this world system. It's, the, it's that when you come to that point, then you're on the right track to, to, to moving into what he wants. So the new, in, the old, in the new covenant, it's about receiving. So that's what makes it, that, that's what makes it an, a new and improved covenant is it's no longer, we don't have, the world is caught up in achievement. And it lasts for about two seconds. Whatever it is you achieve will last about two seconds. There's a glory that, 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 that does not excel. But there's a, there's a weightiness of glory in this new covenant when it's all about receiving. That See, there's no end to, to what we receive because there's no end to who God is and what He is and who, what He has. There's no end to that. So throughout the ages to come, it says in Ephesians, we'll be, we'll be given more and more of who He is, what He is, what He has, uh, and, and all of those things will be those that there's a, there ever in, ever increasing glory that excels. There's never you know there's never a, a fading glory in the new covenant. There's a fading glory in the old covenant. It's up to you. And when you reach the point where you think you've reached the pinnacle, you realize that you're a complete failure because there is no success in the old system. There's no success in it. And that's the point of why he was, why he was trying to point that out to, to him. Ho, uh, Hosea. Hosea, can you see? <laughs> I think of the same thing. Were you thinking the same thing? Yeah, I was. That's how I remember, you know. The, uh, chapter 2, verse 16, and then 19 through 20, and then 23. Uh, in your notes there, it says, And it shall be in that day, and that day is this day, that day is today because that was prophetic and this is the fulfillment of prophecy in our day because Jesus is the, 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 the um, testimony of Jesus is, 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 is the point of all prophecy. All prophecy has to do with the testimony of Jesus. And this is the old covenant was testifying about him to come and now we're actually living in that. And it says the Lord that you will call me my husband. And no longer call me my master. Now that see that's a change in covenant. Mm -hmm. You're, we're married to him. He is, he, you know, we are the we are the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. So he is our husband, and we're no longer servants in the kingdom. In the kingdom, we are sons, and a son abides in the house forever. Yes. Amen. So uh, isn't that isn't that amazing that that's in prophecy? That we're now understanding today what he was prophesying, and people are looking at that and say, "Well, wait a minute, what in, what in the world is that?" Well, it isn't in the world; it's out of this world, 
And we are out of this world. Literally, we are out of this world. We are, we are and I know I, some people last week, I had a few, you know, a couple times that I thought after I said it, you know, that, 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 that you know, we are heaven on earth in a reality. Yes. Wherever we go, the temple is in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm, gonna, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Uh, I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And justice is, uh, his justice system is that he took our place, took everything that was, should have been in our account, and, and he took it and he put it in his account. Uh, and then he put everything that was in his account and he brought it over here and he put it in my account. And that's the, that's the justice of God for the fact that Jesus took my place by taking all that that was in my account away. Now he can deposit everything that is his account into my account. And that's the justice of God with the new covenant. He didn't just sweep it under the rug. There was a justice system in place, the just for the unjust. And that's why uh, we can be uh, betrothed to him. In loving kindness and mercy, I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. See, it's his faithfulness. It's not our faithfulness. It's, he, he, is, he is forever faithful as a high priest. Uh, and you shall know the Lord. Now, um, if you, if you, back in Hebrews, we're going to see that in a minute, but according to the terms of the new covenant is that you're not going to have to say to your neighbor, know the Lord, because everybody's going to know him. How are they going to know him? Because who's in here? The Holy Spirit is the one telling us about him. And he's telling us the truth about him instead of what we've heard about him. So anybody that has the Spirit of God living in them is not going to need anybody else to, to teach them. See, all, all I'm doing, all anybody that's in, in, in the, the five-fold ministry is, is stating the truth that will resonate if the Holy Spirit's in you. It'll resonate as truth to you. But he's already saying these things to us. That's why when, when somebody says them out loud, it's like, yep, that bears witness with what the Holy Spirit's told. So I, I like the way he finishes that, that uh, and you shall know the Lord. And that's the key to this is, is relationship. It's, he wants us to know him. And, the, and the, the power of His resurrection yeah. and the fellowship of His sufferings. And we're going to talk about that uh, regarding uh, communion. And uh, Someone asked me a question about something about that and I wanted to answer that today. But Hebrews 8, 8 through 12 is the terms of the new covenant. If you're still in Hebrews 8, it says, uh, um, For this is the covenant that I will make, verse 10, with, with the house of Israel in those, in those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be their God, and I, I will, I will, I will, I will. It's everything's I will. And none of them shall teach his neighbor, and none of his, his brothers saying, Know the Lord, for they, they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will, I will, I will be merciful to their unrighteousnesses, is what it really says, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Aren't you glad he has that will to will that? Amen? And that, and that was His will. And it was Jesus' work. And it was, it was the, the witness of the Spirit to us. And that's why we don't have... That's why He's telling us everything that Jesus did. Uh, he made, and that first one made the second one obsolete. That's the finishing of that chapter. Okay. Haggai... I don't, I don't have a phrase for that one. But Haggai chapter 2, <laughs> verses 6. He wasn't, he wasn't... I don't think he was Haggy, but, but anyway... Uh, he might have been at times. All the prophets tend to do... Those Old Testament prophets did some pretty strange things. Uh, For thus says the Lord of hosts once more... And this is right out of Hebrews chapter 12. We've read it many, many times in the last couple of months. Once more, in, in a little while is what, it, what it's saying. I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land, and I will shake that all nations, and they shall come... This was the title of a message a few, few weeks ago. They shall come to the desire of all nations. Remember, see, that's all capped. Because that's Jesus. They will come to Him when the Holy Spirit is in the world, drawing all people to, to, to Him. And I will fill this temple. What temple is that? <laughs> She's pointing at the right spot there. Uh, it, it, in fact, those two verses right there by the word temple, 1 Corinthians 3.16 and, 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 and 6.19 both say, Do you not know that you are the temple 
of the Holy Spirit. And that the Spirit of God lives in you. Right? So that's, that's the temple he's filling. Um, and, I, and I will fill this temple with glory. See, the, the, the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the glory of the former. Old covenant, new covenant. The, the glory of the new covenant will far excel over anything, any glory that the old covenant had. Uh, and this glory, again, is an ever-increasing glory that never, ever stops, never, ever ceases. Uh, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, what place? In you, and you, and you, and you, and you. What does he say? What does he say? I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. And he says that. I had, I had about 14 other scriptures, but I only have one page. And I'm making myself hold it to one page. I came close yesterday to move into the second. But then I thought, oh, no. Here we you know, what I wrote, Christ in me is the hope of glory. Amen. Christ in me. That is, that is it, the hope of, of his goodness in my life is because he's in me. And the Holy Spirit is witnessing to all that I have as an inheritance and an identity. Amen. He's opening our spiritual eyes to see the truth that's setting us free. It's making us free. And whom the Son is made free is free indeed. Amen. And in deeds. Your deeds suddenly become a, a, a freedom of, of what the fruit in your life is supposed to be instead of trying to build a brownie point for God's acceptance. He accepts you perfectly. And forever, and because Christ is your your mediator, he, he if unless he unless he doesn't accept Christ, then he has then he he's committed to his covenant to accept us in the same way, in the same love, the same relationship that he has with his Son. In fact, we are one spirit with the Lord. That's what the, it's, that's in the Scripture. I didn't make that up. He, Paul said that. Paul said, uh, "He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit with Him." We, we share the, his DNA, his spiritual DNA, as, as a new creation. And, that, and that's what this is. It's a new creation covenant. Amen. It's a better covenant. It's a new creation covenant. You couldn't have that covenant we have without the new creation. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 is the same thing that Haggai 2 said. In fact, that's why I think it was Paul, but Paul said this. Um, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, that he's shaking, uh, he's shaking heaven and earth. Uh, everything that can be shaken will be shaken, so that that which cannot be shaken, which is our covenant, will remain. Amen? I'm not getting any... Can I have, can I have a good amen? I said, okay. I just, I just wanted one... Just, just for the tape, I wanted a good... Thank you, Mary. Thank you. See, Mary already said amen. There, so. I just want a good amen so that... They know that I'm not up. I'm just not standing here. Uh, yeah, laugh track in the back. Yeah, the laugh track. It's pretty good, isn't it? Y'all are pretty. Y'all are pretty good. Uh, now, John chapter 14, verses 23 to 26 in your notes. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, um, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our our. I love that. Our home. Our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, which means that the New, New Testament commandment is to believe. It's not about doing anything. It's about believing what he said. I'm in the, I'm, I'm in the Father and the Father's in me and we want to be in you. And here's how we're going to do it. And, and it's going to happen if you want it. It's yours. It, it's yours. Receive it. Receive it. Um, these things I have spoken to you while, uh, while being present with you, but the Helper, now notice all three of the trinities in this next sentence, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom, my, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. So again, here it is. You, you, don't, you won't have to say, know the Lord, because see, the Holy Spirit's going to be living in you teaching you everything about... So when you hear something that Jesus said, the Holy Spirit's going to say, this is, what he, this is what He's talking about. This is what He means. This is what it means to you. This is, what, this is what... It's all for your sake that He did it. And that's the fellowship of His sufferings, is that we enjoy this time together because we're, we're, enjo we're, we're benefiting from what He paid through His sufferings. 
That's true fellowship. The fellowship of His sufferings is to, is to, is to fellowship around what His sufferings brought to us. And acknowledging that, and that's what true worship is, is acknowledging that. Uh, the, 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 glory, the glory is full of grace. I've got proof in this in, the, in this verse right here. The glory of God is full of grace. In fact, what he was trying to show Moses way back then was to show them this grace that he couldn't receive at the time because it's a new covenant. It's a two, it's, it was the new covenant. Uh, Ephesians 1, chapter, three, uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 6, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. You know, That's yes. when you lay down to sleep at night, before the, before anything that was made, that was made, he chose you. Mm -hmm. That we should be what? Holy and, without blame. Holy and without blame before him in love, his love for us. Yeah. <laughs> Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. This was his good, the good pleasure of his will. It wasn't Jesus' idea. It was, our, it, was their, it was their idea, our idea, our report, our work, our witness, our will. Uh, to, to the praise of what? The glory of his grace. So the statement I just made at the beginning, the glory is full of grace. You can't have glory without grace. If people are, and this is where the Holy Spirit, you may have, the, the Holy Spirit is going to embrace an atmosphere that's full of God's grace. When we're, when we're teaching and we're ministering the grace of God, that's an atmosphere where the weightiness of God can rest, mm -hmm. which is His glory. That's where His glory can rest. Uh, he, can't, he can't rest his glory cannot rest in a place that where people are being told they must strive to be accepted and right and doing and doing and doing and here's ten steps and here's ten. There's no there's no glory in that because you're back into the glory that fades. It can't. It, there's no there's no true glory in that. The glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the beloved. All of our acceptance and all of the glory that He wants to give us is because of His grace. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 and tw through 22. Now, everybody say now. now. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. As the body of Christ is growing, the holy temple is growing. As he is the Holy Spirit, when he convicts the unbeliever of unbelief and then they, they get the epiphany and believe, they're joined as, a, as part of the temple. And look what he calls it. Uh, built together for a what? A dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So, this, this community of faith this morning are, is a group of individual temples that are, that are gathered together and, and we are a dwelling place for God in the Spirit. He is welcome uh, and at home dwelling in us. That, and that glory is in these, in these earthen vessels so that, the, again, so that the glory is going to be His and not ours. See, I don't have anything to boast in except in Christ alone and in, His, in, 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 His, uh, in the cross. That's our boasting. Amen. Habakkuk 2.14. Uh, again, it says that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that has to do with the message going forth, but I also think it has to do with the body of Christ worldwide. Uh, some people are just now getting to the point where they understand who they are, um, and they think they're still supposed to go to a building where the glory is, but they're taking the glory with them to the, to the building that they gather in. And when they get together, the individual glory becomes corporate glory. And the more grace that's involved in the, 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 his, the, the glory of His grace, the more glory is going to be, the more the furniture is going to be um, 
established to, to contain and hold that weight of His glory. Uh, and his, in, in another verse I remember uh, someone else saying a long time ago, but, and He will glorify the house of His glory. He's going he's to cause His glory to be seen upon us. When we, you know, I, I see, and I, I desire this, I, I want to be in such a relationship and understanding with this covenant that I'm in that when we walk into a room or when we gather here, even like what Sharice was saying, that it's an evident, there's an evidence of His glory that can only happen when the grace of God is, is, is present. It's, you know, if, if, if mixture is being taught and all, you can walk in and they may say a, t- a thing or two about grace or this or that or whatever, but if the, over, if the overwhelming uh, message of that group is about what we need to be doing to make God happy, you're not, people are not going to experience the weight of that glory there. Uh, the furniture can't can't hold it, mm-hmm. and and it, there's no there's there's nothing real about it. This this is the real thing. His his glory is the real thing, and I mm-hmm. once you experience it, you know, nothing else, nothing else even comes close to satisfying. And I believe we're supposed to walk. The more we know that who we are as the temple of the Holy Spirit, the more we're gonna we're gonna be understanding and walking in. The, this this glory that he wants us to that wants to stay in our life every single day of our life, and when I when I group up with somebody else that's just a little extra glory, that's uh, that's going to manifest even in a better way, in a bigger way. Uh, but it, there's no limit in even to any individual uh, how that glory will be seen and how it will it will affect the person that needs whatever they need. They experience it by the glory of his grace. The glory of His grace, and, and and going back to why this is our better covenant. What to read out of the Passion Translation, verse twenty-one: This entire building is under construction and is continually growing under His supervision, mm-hmm. not me, uh, until it rises up, completed as the holy temple of the Lord Himself. This means that God is transforming each of you into the holy of holies, His dwelling place, through the power of the Holy Spirit living in you. There's not, another. It's not us trying to. Yeah. So again, you are a walking holy of holies, and anybody that walks up to you, they don't have to. They don't have to bring a sacrifice because you've got one. You know about the one that's going to, that that causes them to be able to, we, us to be able to walk into that that throne of grace through His torn flesh. Now, anyone that comes to us can enter into that same place through through that the holy of holies that we have become on the earth as the temple. Of the Holy Spirit, what an awesome, what an awesome. Uh, so, I don't need to. I don't need to make anything more of me. What I need to do is make more of Him, mm-hmm. make, make more Him more important. Mm-hmm. Because as I do that, and this is what I. This is the. This is the point I wanted to make. I'm. I'm, I'm doing better than I thought I'd do as far as time. Uh, Let's, in fact, I want you to turn there. For, turn to First Peter. Uh, you know, uh, the last six months or a year, I've just really enjoyed more and more reading Peter's two letters. You know, the, this was the last one. Uh, I mean, this was the last. Th- these two are the last word from Peter. You know, he spoke some in, that, in the Book of Acts, some of the some of the things he said there. But these are Peter's last uh, two little small letters. But he said. Uh, in uh, chapter 5, verse 12, he says, uh, I have written to you, to you briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. Uh, now look, look at the benediction in verse 10. But may the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory, eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. What does that mean after you suffer a while? I can't explain what, you know, there is a, there is a struggle when you're trying to get loose from the, the dominion of the old system. I mean, there's, there's, there's times where you, you're, you're confused. There's times where you fluctuate. There's times where you hear the wrong person say the wrong thing. Triggers the wrong things, and but after we, when we, when we, when we press on through this, the 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 message of His grace, and we keep leaning into it, uh, 
and we keep leaning into it, after a while, again, what is the key to the letter, Paul's letter to the, to the Hebrews, is that your heart might be established in grace. Not that you would know a little bit about it, but that you would be established in it. Amen. So what he's saying here is that, 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 that he called us to, he's calling us to this eternal glory. But in this process, you're going to go through some things trying to weed out that, that stuff that's kept you bound, kept you under condemnation, kept you in feelings of shame, um, and all those things that Jesus paid to free us from. He's going to perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So He wants us to be settled in the, the message of the truth of His grace. He wants us, that's the only place where we can walk in a settled way. And I'm not there yet, honestly. But I'm on my way there. Because the Spirit is the one taking us there. And all our, all our part is to do is to, is to stay out of the way and yield to that, that work in us. Because, I mean, uh, you know, I am I... Th glory yeah. Grace, grace to grace, yeah. Faith to faith, grace to grace. It's a progression toward what we already have here, but we're working out our salvation. Uh, and with fear and trembling, sort of like what Deborah said, we're working it out, not with, not with fear in the sense of being afraid, but with such an awe. There's such an awe to this that's happening to us, and it's, there's such an awe to the realization of this reality that we're discovering as the Holy Spirit's teaching us and, and, and causing us to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. It's just an, it's an amazing process here, but... To, under, to know and understand that it's already completed here. We already are the temple. What's that song, Jaira? But it's that, what, uh, you know, uh, I'm already, what is it? How's it start? Let's see. Um, I'm already loved. I'm already loved. Chosen. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know who I am. <laughs> What's the next part? Let's see. I know what you've spoken. I know what you've spoken. Isn't that a wonderful lyric? Uh, we know what He's spoken. The Holy Spirit's bearing witness to it. Even as I'm speaking this morning, He's bearing witness to this, this reality. And this is where He's taking us. And, and this is what I want you to look at this. Uh, in verse, go back to verse... Uh, let me see. <laughs> verse 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive, you won't achieve it, but you'll receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, you younger people, I know that's not me he's talking about there, uh, submit yourselves to your elders. Now, what does that mean? I mean, you know, what, what that really means is, yeah, what that really means is that someone who's maybe a little farther along in this maturing process, uh, you know, yes, and this, this is the part I want you to see in verse 5. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Now, this is what we started out with here in the beginning. This is the part I want you to see about this, about the, the, the preparing the furniture for the weight of His glory it has to do with this right here more than anything else. It has to do with being clothed with humility. And what does that mean? I'm clothed with His righteousness. I'm not clothed with my righteousness. See, I'm clothed. I, he's put his, the best robe on me, the ring on my finger, the sandals on my shoes, uh, on my feet, sandals on my shoes, the sandals on my feet. The, as the Father has, has, has and there's a, in, in Isaiah, there's a whole prophecy about how He's adorned the bride. Uh, what He's adorned us with is so, uh, we're, being clothed with humility is, is, is He says, for, F-O-R, for God resists the proud, but He gives what to the humble? Grace. Grace. So the more we're clothed in humility and it's all, all about Jesus, 100% about Him and what He's done and nothing about what I've done, my success, my achievements. It's all about His achievements for us. When that's, when that's the, 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 what we're clothed in, that humility, see, that's when the, the weight of His glory can rest. Because, see, that's when He can establish in a, way, in, in a way that has no limitation His goodness. Uh, because He knows that because His goodness and His grace can rest there because uh, there's not, there's not going to be any resistance. Amen. Because it, 
what's the one thing? So that's the answer to the question. Based on the context, how is glory affected? It's, 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 it's affected in a negative way by being what? Proud. Any pride in my life, anything that I brag on in my life, or anything that I think is because of what I've done, see, that has a, a, an effect on causing a resistance to the, to the glory of God. Because there's nothing... You know, Revelation's full of this, that, that, that you know, the, the, the host of heaven, if you go to, uh, you know, uh, Hebrews 12 and you read about that we've come to Mount, we've already, we're already there, but th- there's, no, there's nobody there that's giving accolades to anybody except who? Jesus Christ. The one that tried to do something else, what happened to him? He got the boot. <laughs> Because see, he was trying to bring, he was, he was bringing pride. He, you know, pride was discovered in him. He wanted to be the one in the position. But he had done nothing to deserve it. Jesus has done everything to deserve it. And so we, we are, re- I, want, I want for us, uh, I, want us to, I want to see us so clothed in humility and so absent of pride in any boasting that we might have in what we've done and exclusively honoring and glorifying Jesus and what He's done to the point where there's no resistance between the Holy Spirit's glory resting and operating through the body. Mm-hmm. And, that's, and according to what He's saying right here, that's what, that's what He's saying. Uh, when we're clothed in, that, in, that, in His righteousness instead of ours, we're clothed in His goodness and, and, and everything about Him, then that's when things can go. Uh, he's, and I believe He's preparing the furniture for that. Uh, I put in my notes here, glory is affected in a good way by humility and in a bad way by pride. You know, and I, I said, and so he, he says in the benediction uh, that uh, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and have uh, communion together here. Yes. And that, like you're saying, that that humility is us saying what God says, right? And and that also, we have to. The harder part is to apply that to ourselves when we say, uh, we look at ourselves and we say, I'm weak, or I'm just a worm, or I'm not worthy, or I'm not a good Christian. All that is literally pride, because you're exalting your own thinking above God's thinking. Amen. And so Amen. we have to work at it from the condemned side too, as well as the boasting Amen. side. You know. Amen. That's good. Good word. It is all about Jesus, and we're not the component that makes it work, be it good or bad. Exactly. It's yeah, it's it's Christ in us. The hope is the hope of that glory, and the more we recognize that. I mean, if you get if you get a chance, like I said, I had 19 more scriptures today. But if you want, if you go back and read. Uh, Isaiah chapter 6. See, that's, that's what happened to Isaiah. He said, I saw the Lord. And, and if, you look at the, if you look at the underlying message in the words there, he saw Jesus on the cross is what it's really, really saying. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And because he was lifted up, the, the, then I saw the train of his robe filling the temple. See, we're the train of that robe. We're the train of his righteous... Uh, but he, he he says I'm undone. You know he, he became un, he, com, he came, became completely undone because he said I'm, a, I'm he he thought he was something until he saw him high and lifted up, Amen. and then he realized he wasn't anything. Amen. And that recognition made him something because he took the coal from the sacri- the fire which was the the sacrifice Jesus was sacrificed in our place, and he made him unclean. Yeah, you she's she's a, a woman of the word. I'll tell you she knows that she knows her scripture. But it purified, his lips became purified, and, and as a result of that purification, he began to see and declare that Jesus high and lifted up. Mm-hmm. See, there's no other prophet in, 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 the, in the major prophet or minor one. Zechariah is close, but, uh, you know, Isaiah had a revelation of, of, Christ, of Jesus. And read Isaiah 53. I mean, it's the whole, it's the whole gospel of the cross and everything. I believe that word undone is so good because... I think in the Lord's presence like that, you're, you're made free. Yes. And, and all of the bondage, all of the doings, you know, go off of you because you see how complete you are in Christ and how free you are and how forgiven and how, I and mean, we could go on and on. 
but we really are undone because all the all the stuff that hinders us goes off of us. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus was done. He, he was finished. Yeah. And that's caused us to, to become undone. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. You know, you know, Deborah, I mean, I, she's got, uh, she, the, see, that's, that's a living example of the weight of God's glory ministering through her by what she's saying as a result of that, you know, being clothed in humility. I mean, she's, she's speaking as an oracle of God, and we all, but that, that Isaiah 6 is like, you know, you, you really have to read it and just ask the Holy Spirit to show you what was really happening there. And, and if you go back and look at the words, he was seeing, he was seeing, uh, uh, Jesus high and lifted up, and uh, and he for he was never the same after that. Um, uh, and for, and uh, about communion this morning, Isaiah and, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm stuck in Isaiah. First uh, Corinthians chapter eleven uh, talks about uh, the the what Paul said he received directly from the Lord. Uh, I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. He said, this, take eat, this is my body, which is broken, broken for you. Uh, and uh, do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same manner, he took the, the cup and after supper saying, they, see, they use Texas terms. I love that in the scripture. After supper wasn't dinner. It was supper. <laughs> Lunch is dinner, right? Uh, so after supper, saying this is this cup is a new covenant of my new covenant of my blood. See, it's between people. It's between it's not things. It's people. Uh, this do as often as you as you drink it in remembrance of me. For off, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup in, in, of the Lord in an unworthy manner, not in an unworthy way as a person, not as an unworthy person, but an unworthy manner, where they're not seeing the reality of what it really represents. It's just a token uh, you know, ritual that they do without any understanding. Uh, it can be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Uh, but let each man... Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Um, and for he who drinks in an unworthy manner, not an unworthy person, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So uh, now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. If you want to find the only, this is the only other place in Scripture that I have found where Paul actually uses that same phrase for you to examine yourself, okay? And so he, he gives, he gives, he gives a clarification to what he means by that. Uh, uh, and verse 4 says, for, for, this is chapter 13 of 2 Corinthians, for, for, for though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Now this is the verse, verse 5. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you, know, do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. The disqualification is if he's not in you. If he's in you, you're qualified. So when he says, examine yourselves over there about communion, is this about him or is this about me? If this doesn't really matter, and I don't, I don't really know about all that stuff, I'm just doing it because everybody else is doing it. See, you're, you're disqualifying the power of it to work in a good way in your life. So, what, but when we understand, he said, you know, if doing it in an unworthy manner is not understanding what he did in his taking our place with his own body and his own blood to put us in a, in a, perfect, a, a perfect covenant relationship. And so it, it's, not, it's not causing judgment. They are causing their own judgment. See, God, Jesus isn't judging anybody. Remember that, if you remember that message I preached about judgment, the Father gave it all to the Son 
and then the Son was judged for all of it, and then He gave it to us to make the distinction whether we want to believe that or not. So you're judged, it just, you're judging yourself because you don't believe. So that's really what He's saying. So if, you, if you're believing, if you're if, if examining yourself to see if you're in the faith, if you're in the faith and see your confidence is in Him and what He's accomplished in this, I'm not taking this, you know, just, oh, well, you know, I don't know what it is. I don't, it doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't really matter. Well, it does because this is the life. So you're, void, you're avoiding the life if you're not in Christ and enjoying His life in your life. So that's what Paul was trying to say there. It's not, it wasn't, it's, it used to scare me as a kid. And so many people didn't take the communion because they were trying to examine themselves um, and say, well, I, don't, I feel disqualified. I'm not good enough. Well, then see, there, that, would, that cause any con, would that cause any destruction in your life to be self-condemned? Yes. So it's, it's actually working as judgment in your life because you're not judging that he was the one that keeps you from being judged. Mm-hmm. You see that? Mm-hmm. That's why this is so important to do in a worthy manner, Right? He was worthy to take our place. And He's made us worthy to enjoy the benefits of being in Him and enjoying what He did for us. Amen? And so, Lord, we're doing this in remembrance of You this morning. Uh, we thank You, Lord, for Your body and for Your blood. We, we examine ourselves right now. We're, our faith. See, faith is a revelation of You, Lord. As we understand who You are and what You've done, we're discerning your body. We're discerning your blood. And we thank you for what they both have done in our lives. And we ask you that the weight of your glory would, would invade us in this truth and cause it to, to, to rise up in us to bring forth all that you intended by your word. We, we um, confess, which means to say the same thing as you say, Lord. We're confessing. We're, we're, we're confessing. We're in confession this morning that we're going to, we're, cha- we're, we're saying what you said about this. In Jesus' name, thank you for your body and your blood. This, I'm just so thankful that Paul that called it the blood of the new covenant. And we thank you, Lord, for this new covenant in which you are the high priest forever. You're our propitiation. This is, this blood is our, is the, was applied on the mercy seat in heaven that gives us forever righteousness, forever holiness, forever uh, uh, everlasting life and all in you because of your precious blood. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, While I've got the tape still on, uh, I have to go to uh, next week. I have uh, to go to a conference and for eight hours on Saturday, eight hours on Sunday. So I'm not going to be able to be here. Would somebody else like to bring, bring a word? Mark? Anybody? Nobody? She's not going to be here either. She's going. She's going with. Y'all won't be here either? Okay, well. I guess we have a break. Well, I'll be here by myself as usual. Well, you have to be here just in case somebody shows up. So if somebody comes in, be prepared. To give give a word. Are you serious? No, she's this 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 is a standing. This is a. But I, you know, I, and I will say this, you know, that you are y'all are all the temple of the Holy Spirit, and so there there. There may be there may be a a, a time where, uh, you know, if you feel the Lord an unction in you that the Lord's giving you this, you know, let me know and we'll you know we'll let you. Uh, this isn't a this isn't a locked in place up here. It's it's for for those that, that feel like they're called to give a word. We want to let you have that opportunity. Amen. Amen. And 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 we just we just speak a blessing on you, Sharice. And yes. in yes. fact, in fact, when I close this, I will. I want to, we want to pray for you today. So um, th- thankful. We're thankful for everyone there. Um, thank you, Melissa and uh, Susan. Good to see y'all. Living in the body of Christ. That's, see, that's where we should all be living in Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. Uh, so anyway, love, love y'all. We love everybody that's, that's joined us this morning. And, and we, we will be back uh, in two, two weeks. Victory, victory in Jesus, our Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath his crimson blood. 
So love y'all. We'll see you in two weeks. Praise